The tale I want to talk about today is something I title The Dam at the Tin Woodsman. So I was a little kid and I was at my um, grandparents' house and I knew if I was over there, it, uh, when I got up in the morning, it was cartoons and pancakes. Being a very anxious boy, um, I got up pretty early, pre-dawn, and because of cartoons and pancakes. And I was going to turn on the TV, which I knew would be the test pattern, um, just because it was too early for actual programming. So I came out of their bedroom, and the house is a very open plan. So they had the bedrooms at the one side, and there's open area with a pool table, and a kitchen table, and a TV, and then the uh, kitchen area. And so it's on the way to the TV, and right by the pool table, when um, something caught my attention in the kitchen. And when I turned my eyes towards it, I, I just couldn't believe what it was. So what I encountered was a being that was taller than me, but not as tall as a person, um, clad head to toe in like an aluminum cloth. Didn't have any, any eye holes or any holes for like the mouth. Um, looked very much like like a robot kinda um, so when I turn my attention towards it it turns it, its attention towards me and I've got all these questions in my head like what is this thing and why is it here and as I'm trying to process going through this whole calculus of like what's going on the tensions is building and building and building between this being and I it doesn't doesn't talk it doesn't give me any imagery or anything like that um, this tension was just growing though and about the time I ask myself am I in any danger this thing like picks up this hand towards me nice and easy and it, it the thing that I I remember is it wasn't wearing a glove it was wearing like an oven mitt and the tension just drops and I had enough so I go back into my um, grandparents bedroom and I cower between them and I watch the entrance to their bedroom and if this being would have come through the door I would have died but it doesn't come so I don't get up and I don't watch cartoons um, I get called to eat my pancakes by that time cartoons are going or over and it's a pretty pretty traumatic event um, not being able to watch cartoons and I got the courage to go to each of the the bedrooms and open up the bedrooms and the closets and open the closets there was nothing there and so I just didn't tell anybody I didn't really know what to do or how to handle it so didn't really talk about it um, it wasn't until I watched The Wizard of Oz I was probably eight or nine when the tin woodsman came on it was almost a panic attack of like <gasps> that's what I saw but again I couldn't you know, tell anybody about that so I just kept it in it wasn't until I was probably a teenager I talked to my uncle Dan about it and he was like far out man and he told me about um, Grandpa Joe having an encounter with um, a UFO in one of his logging crews up in the Olympics um, a couple years earlier than the experience I had so I was like oh well, that's interesting I, I knew I really couldn't talk to him about that just because he was a very pious very very Catholic person and he had a very limited world view and I don't think aliens were a part of that and talking about that probably wouldn't he wouldn't have participated in it but it wasn't until I was in my 30s when I asked him to tell me about his his encounter. So he told me about the, the object and he said they were um, cutting and pulling trees in the morning. And he said an object come up over the hill and said it looked like two, two, uh, two aluminum pie plates put together. And he said it was pretty big and slowly um, drifted down this canyon between them and, and they, he said everybody ate their PB and J's and pointed at it and talked about 
what do you think it is? And it went up over the next hill and over the hill after that, and then it was, it was gone. And so when he got done, I, uh, I was like, well, I'm gonna, I want to, want to tell you about the being that I encountered uh, as a kid at the house. And I really thought he would. I I didn't know how he was gonna to process it and take it, and so I told him the whole tale. Um, he didn't say a word, didn't interrupt, didn't ask for clarifications, didn't ask questions. He just looked at me through his eyebrow. And when I got to the end, he was like, hmm, okay. And we never talked about it after that, about his experience or about the, the thing that I experienced. That was that. So what I encountered that day was the most traumatic experience I've ever had. Not that it hurt me or um, injured me or anything like that. It's just that I didn't, I don't know what to do with it or where to put it. It's been 45 years where I think about this thing probably, probably two or three times um, a week. It's this, it's this experience of, I know what I saw, but I don't know what I saw. It haunts me, even to this day. Give it up for it.